today we'll be editing this dog photo and transforming it into an eye-catching pet portrait. Hi there and welcome to the video. My name's Gareth and I'm a professional retoucher and image editor based in the UK. So as you can see here we've got a fantastic image of a dog running across some sand and this is a really nice shot but we're going to make it a bit more iconic and just a lot more eye-catching. So the first step is I'm going to make a duplicate of the background layer so press Ctrl or Command J depending on if you're a PC or a Mac user, and we make that duplicate. Now, we're gonna do some edits to the background at the start of this. We're actually gonna do more work to the background than we are to the dog, because eliminating and reducing the distractions from the main subject goes a long way to improving the image. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's look at the background here, and the thing that strikes me is there's this little bit of tree area up here above the peak of the sand where you can see some green and this bit hazy and all that. Because that's taken up such a small amount of the shot, it looks like it shouldn't really be there. So I want to make a nice clean background and get rid of it. So press L for your lasso tool, or go to the toolbar at the side and just make sure it's the normal lasso tool. And make sure you're actually on the pixel layer, the duplicated pixel layer, because this will not work on a blank layer. Just draw roughly around the area that we want to try and remove. And we're going to try content aware fill on this and see if Photopea can do a good job of guessing that we want that filled with the sand texture. So to do this, we need to go to edit, fill, and make sure the fill type here is content aware. And click OK and we'll see what happens. Content aware fill is a bit of a funny, a funny beast. Sometimes it works better than expectations and other times it doesn't work at all. Well, that was great. That's done a really good job of filling in that gap with sand. Now we've got like a smooth, um, infinite background that just kind of goes on out the frame and it just makes it instantly look more cohesive. So the next thing I want to do is just to do a little bit of additional cleanup on this background. So I'm going to create a blank layer. And for this, I'm going to use the spot healing brush tool. So if you go to the side and choose that on there, spot healing brush and set the source up here to current and below because we're using it on a blank layer so it needs to be able to see the pixels below in order to work. We'll just make the brush a bit bigger. I'm going to right click and change the hardness down to zero just so we've got a soft brush. And all we're going to do here is any of the sort of dark spots that are dotted around the sand that might distract your eye from looking at the dog. I'm just going to just click over them like that and the spot healing brush tool will automatically try and remove that item. It's almost like a little mini content aware fill but in a brush that's good for small areas. I'm not going to go crazy here and remove every little bit of texture because we still want it to look like sand and it still needs to look natural. But I'm just maybe taking some of the bits that if you glanced at the image you don't want your eye to go anywhere but looking straight at the dog. So if, the, if you look away, and this is a really good tip, if you look away from a, a photo for a couple of seconds and look straight back at it, if your eye goes anywhere but the main subject first, then that means that you probably need to reduce or remove some distracting elements to the image. But I think that's far enough. If we just turn that off and on, we'll just see we've removed just enough of that dark texture and those dark shadow areas just to clean it up nicely. So, because I don't plan on doing any more of that, I'm going to have that layer selected, hold the shift key, select the layer below, and press Control or Command E, and that'll just merge them together, just because I don't need to have those as a separate layer. Now, we've cleaned the background up somewhat, but what I want to do now is just to add more punch and colour to it. And in order to do that, we need to isolate the background from the dog, because we don't want any adjustments affecting the dog as well as we just want to adjust the background at the moment. So we basically need to make a selection of the dog so that we can sort of omit it from the adjustments I want to do on the sand. Now, there's many ways of doing this, of course. Um, you could use the pen tool, you could do the lasso tool and then refine the edge. There's a tool here called quick selection tool, which won't work very well on this image because there's not a huge amount of contrast, but I am going to use it anyway because I'm going to show you a really good like power tip to how to get the best out of this particular tool. So how it works, and I'll, sh I'll show you it here failing, but how it works is you 
select it, you choose the quick selection tool and just click somewhere inside the object you want to select. It's kind of like the magic wand tool, but it's a little bit more intelligent when it comes to picking up um, edges inside solid objects or what it thinks you're trying to select. So if you look carefully at like the little dotted lines, you can see it selected most of the dog, not a problem. So I'm going to click the adjustment layers icon and I'm going to create a hue saturation adjustment layer. And as we can see by the layer icon, the dog is selected. So it's in white and the background to the layer mask is black. So that won't be, that won't be affected, but we do want to, we want to reverse that because it is the background we want to affect. So just click on the layer mask icon and press command I to invert it. So now we're only going to affect the background and not the dog. And just to see exactly um, where the mask sits on the main image, if you hold, if you click on the layer mask and you press the forward slash key, it will give you a temporary red visualization of either what's selected or what's not. But in this mode, whatever's red is actually not selected. So you can go in with your black and white on the layer mask now with a brush on black and white, sorry. And you can just go and tidy things up, brush away areas that shouldn't be selected and brush in areas that should be, etc. So all we're doing now is just, just trying to fix the outline a little bit. Again, this does not have to be a perfect selection by any means because we're not changing the background enough for it to really warrant a perfect mask. Um, something like that's fine. We could also actually add a little bit of feather into the mask, maybe 0.5. So back to the sand. I'm going to click the colorize button to get a nice even color tone across the um, across the sand, which at a default looks ridiculous because it's put the saturation right up. So what I want to do is adjust the hue slider so that we get more of a warmer yellowy orangey color, something like that. Increase the saturation a bit, not too much. We don't need it to like a cartoon, but you've got to be careful because if you push the hue slider too far to the right, it starts to go green and the other way it starts to go red. So we want something just in the middle like a like a golden sort of sand color. I think that's perfect. And instantly that just really punches up the background. Right, now to make some small adjustments on the dog itself. So I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer down here and I'm gonna create a selective color adjustment layer. And this is one of the things I like to do to, with photos of cats and dogs, is to actually just enhance the color of like the tongue if the tongue's visible. So we're going to go down and select magenta here, not red as you might think, because red will actually start affecting the fur colors as well. And the idea with using selective color is we want to get away without making any masks and things like that if we can. So if we target the magenta range, I'm going to make sure it's set to absolute for the strongest results. And I'm going to take all the cyan out. It might be quite subtle to see on the screen, but it's just, it's just clean that up a little bit. And then if I take the magenta probably to 100 as well on this, and I'll just turn it on and off so you can see the difference. It's not a huge difference. Again, you don't want to make it like a cartoon, but it's just enhanced the, the sort of the natural pink color of the inside of the mouth and the tongue. And it just brings a little bit more life into the shot. Now, this at this stage as well, if the eyes were dark, as they are quite often with dogs, um, I would have brightened the eyes, but the lighting on this is excellent, so you can see the eyes really clearly. To be honest, there's not really much else I would do on this on this shot in terms of the actual dog itself, because it's just it's absolutely great as it is. But there are some more things that I want to do overall to the image, and one of them is to make a brightness and contrast adjustment. So I'm just going to keep this simple. I'm just going to go with the brightness and contrast adjustment layer. And I'll increase the brightness a little bit. I don't want to go crazy because the white fur of the dog is already probably kind of pushing the white values. And what I mean by that is if we go too far, they're going to lose detail and it'll just, it'll just be a solid white blob, which is not what we want. So be a bit careful with that. And the contrast the same. We're going to push it up to the point where it's nice got a nice pop to it something like that I think that looks good 
we are losing a little bit of detail in the fur down here notice if i turn that off and on you're losing a little bit so i might back the contrast off just just a tiny bit just so we aren't losing any necessary detail and on top of all of this what i'd like to do is i'd like to create a vignette and basically a vignette is an area of darkening around an image uh, that you get naturally on um, certain lenses but it's quite good to add this yourself in photo p by creating a curves adjustment layer and we'll just darken this down just darkening everything a little bit just from the middle like that and then go to the layer mask and press Control or command i to invert it and now we've got to paint it in where we want and the idea of a vignette in this sense is to basically draw your eye even more to the subject by darkening slightly the outside of the frame so what we'll do here now we've got our um darken curve there which we've got the mask inverted so it's not showing make sure we've got a brush tool selected and the foreground color is white and now i'm going to just add some around the edge and do you know what i'll do here i'm going to put the hardness to 100 so you can really see where i'm brushing because there's a really good way to handle this in a minute instead of just using a big soft brush which can actually slow things down a lot i'm just going to roughly paint a bit in the corners to start with just like this it does not want to be even to make it look a bit natural it it's actually beneficial if the bits aren't even just doing sort of like that maybe a tiny bit from the side you don't want it to go too far into the shot okay now that looks awful but the reason why i did it with the hard brush was to show you this little trick once you've made your darkened areas around the edge make sure the layer mask is selected the curve and then go to the mask tab in the property section here and increase the feather so this is a real-time feathering of the layer mask for the curves and as you can see if i keep dragging it up it gets softer and softer and more diffused now we've got a very natural vignette look. If I turn that on and off, it's just subtle, but it's just drawing your eye to the dog in the middle. Uh, and the beauty about doing it this way, rather than actually applying a feather filter, is that it's um, infinitely adjustable. So you just go back to the feather slider if you wanted to make it a bit harsher, a bit more obvious. And we can adjust until we're happy. So this is time for the bonus tip. This is the secret sauce that I mentioned earlier that isn't visible in the thumbnail or the preview, so you'll only see it here. And what we're gonna do for this is go to the second layer here, which is where we did most of our cleanup on. I'm gonna right click and choose convert to smart object. Okay, and once that's been created, we're gonna go to the filter menu and we're gonna to go to blur and radial blur. Now we don't actually want the radial blur per se. What we want to do is change the zoom blur by clicking this button here. And this as a default will be probably too much. Actually, that doesn't look too bad. So what we're looking here is to get some real movement into the shot to make it look like the, the dog's really rushing towards the camera. But we don't want it to affect all of the dog because it just starts to make it far too blurry. So what we can do is we can leave it a value like 10, press OK. And because we made it a smart object, we've now got this smart filters layer mask, which means everything at the moment is affected by that radial blur. But if we click on that layer mask, press B for our brush tool, I'm gonna to make the brush quite soft. And with black as our foreground color, wherever we paint, we're now going to paint away the radial zoom effect. So I'm gonna brush it off the dog's face because we want to see all that. I don't know what happened there. I wasn't on the layer mask because we want to see that detail and any important detail that you want to absolutely see, just brush over it with the black brush. 